there are risks associated with doing the hip replacement surgery. And I try to tell patients, uh, I, I spend time actually talking about this with every patient because it's really important for people to understand that there are some risks. And we do everything we can to minimize those risks, but they still exist. One of the most important things for patients and families to understand is that there is a very small risk of the hip getting infected. That risk is around 1%. And if it, or less here at our institution. And if the hip gets infected, it can be disaster because sometimes we have to go in and take out these parts, put in a spacer, put the patient on IV antibiotics, and redo the hip. So we're very careful. We give patients antibiotics before and after surgery. We check and make sure they don't have a bladder infection that they might not be aware of because especially older women can have bladder infections and not be aware. Uh, we are very, very careful with how we prepare the skin, the, skin, the prep that we do before surgery, and we even have patients scrub with an antiseptic soap before surgery at home to try and decrease the amount of harmful or dangerous bacteria that are on their skin. Finally, after people have had the hip replacement surgery, they need to know that when they see the dentist, it's important that the dentist give them antibiotics they take some pills an hour before the dental procedure to minimize them getting an infection in their hip. And fortunately, it's a very, very uncommon occurrence, but that's where education, I think, is very important for patients to know what they need to do uh, for what we call antibiotic prophylaxis. The first hip replacement is called a primary, and a redo is called a revision. And revision surgeries can be required uh, for various reasons. I just We talked about infection. Sometimes if the patient is dislocating their hip, which is another risk of, an, of this surgery that the hip replacement pops out of the socket, we need to reoperate. Sometimes the joint just simply wears out. So if someone's in their early 50s and we do hip replacement surgery and it lasts for 20 years, which is a good result, then they're in their early 70s and we may have to redo the operation. So for young patients, the risk of needing a revision is something I talk about. Uh, we also talk about the small risk of nerve injury or blood clot, uh, the risk of the hip popping out of the socket. And also, I try to make sure people understand there's a small chance that we're going to make their leg a little longer. When we do the surgery, we tend to make the leg we operate on a little bit longer because we don't want the hip too loose. If it's loose, there'll be a higher chance it's going to pop out of the socket. So most people don't appreciate if they're a couple millimeters longer. Um, so it's not common that someone recognizes that they're longer. And I happen to always get an x-ray in surgery, actually, to check the lengths of the legs. So I have a good idea that we're very close. Uh, but I do counsel patients that it's possible that we'll make their leg a little bit longer. And then they want to know if I can make the other leg longer, too. But I say, 